Hi. Normally, when I review one of Key Studio's products, um, I get some comments, some questions asking about the code. And I wanted to show you where you can get the code from. So usually in each kit, you get a little brochure like this that lists the different parts. And at the top here, it actually tells you where you can go and get the code. So I thought I would show you this now. So let me start by um, sharing my screen and showing you what this looks like. The information that Key Studio says to type in, which is docs.keystudio.com, and then go to this page. It will bring up here um, a section where it says search for docs. And you so search for the individual um, kit that you're looking for. So in this case, it's 0576, and it finds the Key Studio smart eco-friendly house here. So we can click it. And on this landing page, we get information about um, a kit list, the different descriptions, features, information about the main board for the UNO, and down here, two different kinds of code, Arduino and Kids Block. I worked with Arduino, so you can come onto this page. It'll give you information about how to install Arduino IDE if you haven't already gotten it, download drivers, and then further down the page, it actually goes module by module to teach you each individual one. So, for example, the first one here is about the um, RGB module. And you can download all the code by clicking on here. It comes up as a zip file, and then you extract it, and then you can upload the information. So, let's start by looking at the first one, which is here. The code here didn't need any changes. It's got a library included, but essentially what happens is you set the brightness here, uh, so 5 is not particularly bright, but you can change that number all the way up to 255, the commenting here being really helpful. And you have four different uh, pixels, and each one comes up a different color. This is with the brightness of 5, but you can change it to be, for example, 200. So I'll show it to you as 200 now. Next, we have the 3.2, which is the PIR motion sensor. And the code is here. So it sets the pen, which is pen number 10. And it starts looking for information. And when it sees someone or something in a certain distance of the pen, it changes the value to 1 and then prints to the serial output someone's in the area. And if it doesn't see anyone, it prints out no one. Again, no changes required here. The PIR sensor is here. So if we look on the code, we can see it says someone's in the area. That's me. But if we back up out of the way, it tells us that nobody is in the area anymore. Next, we have 3.3, which is the photo resistance. This goes into pen A0, and what it does is it looks to see how much light it's seeing in the photo resistance, and it prints it to the screen. Again, no changes required. Here's the photoresistor here, and if you look over here on the screen, you can see that when it's open to the, the daylight, it's got 1023, but if I were to cover it up, the number has gone down. Here's the temperature and humidity sensor. This is the XHT11. The code here prints out what the humidity is and then provides the information. The temperature provides the information. This is in Celsius, reads it to the serial output. Again. No change is required here. The temperature and humidity sensor is in here. And you can see on the screen it's printing out the humidity and the temperature. But if we were to heat it up by breathing on it, we would see that the humidity goes up and the temperature goes up. I'll give it a try now. So we can see the humidity went up, the temperature not so much. Here's the code for 3.5, which is the LCD screen. It's got all of the code required here. Originally it said hello world and hello keys, but I changed it to I love this eco house. And when I had my kids playing with this, I changed this to their names and they thought that was absolutely brilliant. No changes required here. This is the code for the AD key. This is the one that's got the four buttons and the one button to the side. We can see the code here is looking for the values which are returned by those keys. Each key comes up with a different value. And then depending on the value, it tells you which key you've pressed. SW1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. 
This is the tutorial online for this SW1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 AD. Um, these are the expected locations. So if you press the first button, it should return SW1. The second one should return SW2, etc. Now, in my case, what I found was that when I pressed the different buttons, I never got an SW5. I got an SW1 twice. So my single button and the one just the one that was closest to the individual key, if I pressed them, they both gave me SW1. So I did have uh, an issue here that I never had the SW5 pressed. I had SW1 pressed twice. Uh, and that had a knock-on effect later on, but I will show you the, the differences there. So um, SW1 gave me 1096, I think, each time. Um, so it wasn't that I could adjust these numbers because they gave me exactly the same numbers. But um, otherwise, no changes required here, although it didn't work as expected. Here's the AD key here. We get the output over there telling us which key has been pressed. So at the moment, nothing is being pressed. But if I press this one, we see SW1 pressed. If I press this one, we get SW1 as well, which I think is an error that I've just mentioned. Uh, we can also get SW5. That used to say 4, but now it says 5. SW3 and SW2. This is 3.7, the soil humidity sensor. It's constantly reading to see what the soil humidity is, and it prints it out to the serial communication. No change is required. The soil moisture sensor is in here with the readout on the screen, and if we were to get our finger a little bit wet and stick it in between those two prongs, we can see that the humidity levels increase. You take your finger away, they go back down again, finger back, back again. 3.8, the water level sensor, similarly, always listening to what the water level is, prints it out to the serial communicator, updates it every half second, no change is required. The water level sensor is here with output onto the screen. If we were to get our finger a little bit wet and stick it onto the sensor, we see that the numbers go up to quite large values. Take your finger off and they go back down again. Is the relay. Again, no changes required. What happens is if you are to input a D, so I'll show you what that is because you might not be familiar with it, to go to the serial communicator and you can type in D, for example, because that's what it's waiting for, and press send. And when it does that, you can hear a noise where the pump is working and it lights up an LED. The relay is inside the house in here, and it is controlling the pump, which is out here. So if you type in a D, because that's what it's being told to look for, if you type in a D and press send, you can hear the pump go. Let's listen for it now. And if you put in D multiple times and then send it, you hear the beeping multiple times. 3.10 is actually the same as 3.9, just including the water. This is 3.11, this is the passive buzzer, and we've defined the pen for the passive buzzer, and then we define the information that changes the frequency of the buzzer. So originally this had been 500, but I changed it to 220. Quite an interesting way of playing around with it. You know, what does it sound like if I have a 1? What does it sound like if I have a 700, for example? No changes required. The buzzer is inside the house here, and it does exactly what you would expect a buzzer to do. It makes noise. 3.12 is looking at the ultraviolet sensor. It's reading the information all the time and then printing it out to the screen, giving you both an actual photo current value and putting it into one of these categories. I only could get it to go to 1 and 0, maybe because I was inside the house. No changes required. And here we have our ultraviolet sensor with our readout over here on the screen, and it tells us that our UV index is zero with a photo current value of four millivolts. But if we switch this to angle more towards the sun, we can see that now we've gone up to 43 and 63. Now we're in a UV index of one. We've ventured outside for this video. In this one, the solar panel is providing the energy to power this fan. Which if we stop it, it's like this, but if we flick it, it starts moving. Moving on to more of the Internet of Things option. This is the energy efficient lighting. 
So what happens here is it's connected in the photoresistor pin with the PIR motion sensor. If it reads out that there's not much light in the photoresistor and it sees a person, then it will turn on the LED. So similar to a nightlight in your house. No change is required here. We have to have someone moving in front of the PIR and also a dark space and then the LED inside the house will come on. So if I cover up the photoresistor because it sees me for the PIR, the LED comes on. This one is the 5.2 plant light. Now this one did require some changes because that AD key for me never said SW5. So on this one you have a number you can press on the AD key and that will make the LEDs turn different colors. So originally it was supposed to be, um, if you pressed three, it made, I think, the green come on, four made the blue come on, and five made the, the red come on. However, as I said, mine never worked. Is I went into this code and I changed this line here. So originally this said between zero and 100, I think. It might have been zero and 200. But um, my key for key two was, I think, 890. So I said anything between 800 and 900 would make the, the red come on. So I fixed this problem in this way. The rest of the code didn't require any changes. Slowly go through the code for you. Here's the plant light, here's the AD key, and when I click different buttons, it changes the LED, which would be for the plants inside the house. So for example, if I click here, I get green, if I click here, I get blue, and if I click here, I get red. Environmental monitoring here. On this one, it reads out the temperature and the humidity sensor uh, and the photoresistor sensor and prints that information to the LCD screen on the actual house. No changes required here. We see that we have the temperature, humidity, UV, and the illumination here. If I were to cover up that illumination, we can see that the number will go down. And if we were to move the house so that UV is looking into the light, we can see the UV index has gone up. Water level monitoring. This connects in the water level pin with the buzzer and the LCD. So depending on how much water the water level pin is, is registering, um, it will change the buzzer and print out to the front of the house. So for example, if it doesn't see enough water, it has a slow beep and will tell you that it has a low value on the LCD. And if it thinks there's too much water, it will have a higher pitched beep. So it's alerting you either way, either that there's not enough water or that there's too much water. No changes were required here. As we can hear, it's nice and quiet when the water level is high enough, but if we drop below 50, we start to get a warning. It sounds like this. And if we get the water level to go up too high, we get a different sound. Soil humidity monitoring. Very similar to the last one, except now we're looking at the humidity of the soil, the buzzer, and the LCD. So it's constantly reading in the soil humidity value, and if it gets too low, it has a low, slower pitch buzzer, and it prints it to the LCD on the house. And if it has too high of a soil humidity, it makes a higher pitched buzzer, and again shows it on the front of the house. No changes required here. The soil humidity of zero, we get this sound, but if we increase the soil humidity, we can get it to stop the buzzer for a while, and if we had too much humidity, it would give us a different sound. Here's our automatic irrigation system. So right now, it sees that there's a lot of water over in the water tank, but not in the soil. So we can hear the pump trying to move the water from the water tank into the plants. And if we were to show that the soil is now humid enough, the pump stops. This code lets you control the water wheel using the AD key. So for certain ones of these, when you press it, it makes the pump come on, which would make the water come through onto the water wheel and make the water wheel spin.
And finally, this is carrying all of them together. It is uh, quite a longer bit of the code, so I'm not going to go through each one of them here, but I will show it on the screen for you. I expect I will need a change for the SW5. Otherwise, there were no changes required on the other things, so I think probably it will just be the SW5 that needs changing. I say probably because I've left the water options until last. The final code is a summing up, and you're supposed to be able to switch between these different experiments using the AD key uh, and clicking here. And then it tells you the different tasks here, but I found this challenging myself. Uh, the first one works, though. So this is the one where if I cover up the light and it sees me, I get a night light. That one works really well for me. And it says task zero. If I click this button, it'll go to task one, but it doesn't immediately do anything for me. If I click it for a while, Sometimes it will bring up soil, humidity, water level. Sometimes it brings up temperature and humidity. Other times it just sits on task one. To be perfectly honest, I didn't like this last bit of the code. I prefer just doing one at a time. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you found this useful uh, and seeing the house in action useful as well. Um, as I said at the beginning, all of this code has been downloaded online. You don't have to log in anywhere. So you should be able to access it yourself and have a go. Thank you and goodbye.